everybody. This is Fred Meissner with the Fred Report conference call for October 14, 2010. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes here. First of all, we're not going to have our moderator, Jeff Garbaz, on the call today. He may listen in. I doubt it. He is he has been stricken with the flu and uh, has missed some uh, appointments and some fun here in Atlanta, which is really sad. Uh, so this may be a quicker call than usual. Uh, we'll uh, do our best for you, though. Uh, let's get right into the stock market here. Uh, you know, I guess the first thing to say is the market keeps working its way up. We keep having skepticism. We are, however, at resistance now at the 1180 area, which translates to roughly 118 on the SPY, currently trading around 117.50. Um, we could see a little bit of a dip here at any time because we are overbought and it is options expiration, but I'm still sensing a fair amount of skepticism in this market. I still don't think people believe that this market can continue to rally, and we are uh, still seeing signs that we are going to continue to rally, and indeed nothing that I have on the stock market is really giving any sort of sell signal on an intermediate term basis. It's just that we're overbought, and as traders that have been trading for a long time will tell you, all of us traders find out sooner or later to our chagrin, as it were, that when the market is overbought, it does not have to come down just because we feel it should. So trends are up, moving average systems are up, everything is basically looking to me like we could have some higher prices here, and uh, I'm still uh, expecting a good end of the year. We may not have an appreciable dip before a year-end rally starts. I think everyone's looking for that. I do talk to portfolio managers all the time, and I'm now getting comments from people like, uh, golly, I'm not in this thing. I'm really starting to underperform. Uh, I really don't want to buy anything, but I guess I'm going to have to. And usually when you hear commentary like that, what that means is the market's going to keep going for a while until all those people are sucked in. They get excited about the market, and the market comes down. So I think things are going along about, as we mentioned, that they should. A quick note on sectors and such before we get to the bond market. Um, we still think that discretionary and technology are the best sectors. However, we note that there are layers of resistance on the XLY, which is a consumer discretionary ETF, between 34 and 35, and right now we're at 34.50. So we could see that start to pause a little bit. We also also note the technology sector stocks are still looking pretty good. The IYW still is looking strong. We're actually, again, almost at new highs versus the April highs, and uh, we still continue to like technology better than most. You know, the financial stocks, our favorite financials are doing better than the f stocks that we don't like in that area, but that's about the only redeeming thing you can say for financials. We just don't see much going on in there. And healthcare has definitely perked up short term, intermediate term, probably not favorable, but I think what that's saying is, you know, as gridlock comes in, and it looks like given some of the economic numbers that we're going to see some gridlock in the government here, that healthcare is probably going to do a little bit better. We note, though, that the stocks that we like in healthcare, i.e., some of these big farmers, are still way outperforming the stocks that we do not like, although we are seeing you know, a little bit of improvement in stocks, for example, you know, like Gilead that has tried to rally. And uh, so we'll keep our eyes on that, but these are still basically those uh, health care and financial should be the underperforming sectors. Let's talk about bonds here for a minute. Um, the TLT has declined once again to 102 and held. Um, it does have a short-term pattern on it that is up, actually, i.e. higher lows, albeit lower highs. In technical parlance, this is called a wedge. Basically, if the TLT were to work its way through 106, it probably is set up to make new highs. Honestly, I'm surprised, and I can't wait to see my accumulation model after Friday's close to see if it's broken down. It keeps looking like it's going to break down and then does not. So, you know, we can have this market rally without rates going up appreciably. 
appreciably, excuse me, but I would also say if you guys are buying bonds for your clients, note that the corporate still look a little bit better. Note that the HYG is now at 90, at 90.02. It's almost through there. That says these credit fears are lessening and high yields might get a move here. That's an area to speculate in if you've got someone that's a little more aggressive wants to move out on yield. And the BWX is still trading extremely well. International bonds in many ways continue to look better than our bonds. So let's let's see what happens there. But I would be avoiding treasuries in favor right now of corporates and if you're a little more aggressive international and then maybe high yield. Um, let's talk for just a couple of minutes about currencies before we get into the gold market simply because the dollar seems to be having a real effect on these bonds. The first thing to mention is my type of work will almost always be early in calling turns on the currencies simply because currencies have a tendency to trend more than anything else. Uh, the dollar is down in a support area. The overbought, oversold stuff that I do is suggesting that the dollar, it could rally imminently towards 81. And we're seeing, you know, hysterical sort of gap ups on the euro and stuff like that here. But I would not be trading these currencies on the long side until you see some strength in the dollar and some weakness in the euro. Say the, the euro below 138 uh, would be a sign of that. And really, guys, the dollar is much weaker than I thought it was going to be for a while. It's acting more like I thought it was going to act in the first part of the year. So I think Ed, the dollar is down and any rally up is counter trend, and we can use that to position in, in foreign bonds and foreign currencies and foreign markets, all of which are looking pretty good, by the way. If you look at the BRIC countries, if you look at Turkey, all of these markets are starting to outperform. And we're working at getting uh, a list of outperforming international ETFs out and up on the website. We've had a couple issues with that. That's my fault. Uh, but we'll have that up there, I think, in the next couple of weeks. And I'll let you know on a call or via special email when that happens. Um, let's take a look at gold, which everyone's really excited about here. Um, gold sort of blew through our target of 130 after pausing for a while. We do have a new 18-month objective of 152 on the GLD, which transfer, translates out to about 1520 on gold on the COMEX contract. We continue to like gold here, but it is getting a little bit overextended. Um, it's going to take a lot of work to get trend systems negative on gold, so I can't be negative on gold, but I can look at the idea that we may have a pullback. If you've got new clients coming in and are trying to position in gold, I would position over the next several weeks rather than just tossing all the money in there. With any luck at all, we'll get a pullback on gold to 128 to 130 from this area on the GLD. Those would be good places to buy this gold if we get a chance of doing it. Um, but I definitely want to be in these metals for the longer term. I am a commodity bull, and I am an inflation bull. Um, and that, I guess, makes me a bond bear. And the good news is, since they're both up, I'm bound to be wrong on one of those. Um, so in terms of the other commodities, oil has rallied up to resistance in the 36-37 area on the USO. Much through there, we're going to challenge 40. We note that the oil stock indexes and the oil stocks you know, are starting to pause a little bit in here. They're at resistance, and that may be a sign that this oil is not going to keep going here. We like oil a lot, but there are seasonal tendencies for this market to fall into November or so. Admittedly, because of uh, the whole big mess in the Gulf, the seasonal tendencies on oil are not working. Um, looking at the DVC Commodity Index, um, it's trading still above our 24-25 area. Um, and again, that's a market we think is probably going to be a good bit higher a year from now, but could be lower two months from now. So again, if you're buying the DBC or any sort of commodity-related stuff, you may want to leg in rather than just tossing all your money in right now, especially for new clients. Mm -hmm.